In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. Yes, it's been said, without vision, the people perish. Without vision, the people perish. And truly, we see that although everything can be seen at once now in a way that has never been possible, we have the technology, the machines to actually look through flesh and blood, brick and stone. We have technology that can x-ray the very innards and bones of a man or a woman. We have technology that can see through buildings and whole towns to locate a single individual or locate a single item from hundreds of thought, sometimes thousands of miles of a distance. Each one of us carrying inside our pockets, even now computers with the highest computing power of a speed, we can pull up <clears throat> images from around the world, images from museums, remote places in the world, things that you would have never been able to see at any point in time. We all see and have seen more than any of the kings of old. There is no place, relatively speaking, on earth in which you cannot just open it up, look on your phone and, and see, look to see what it looks like in the Amazon, in a frozen tundra, a barren wasteland. And yet, Without vision, the people perish. What does it mean to have vision? What does the scripture mean when it says, without vision, the people perish? What is our Lord talking about when he says, the eye is the lamp of the body? And if your eyes fill with darkness, how dark is it? The Serbian church And of course, I have to represent the team. I think the Serbian church is, in many ways, the brightest light of the churches. Because the Serbian kings, they did something unique. The Serbian kings are known for putting their treasures not into their own personal vaults, they didn't put their treasures into their own kind of sarcophagus and tombs, per se. The Serbian kings built churches. The Serbian kings built monasteries. The Serbian kings paid homage to God with their wealth. And you see it. You see it. Literally built temples to God, not to themselves. Why? Because they had vision, they had true vision. King Stefan the Blind, blinded by his brother, and yes, the Serbians have sin. Jealousy, envy, the very things the Lord is talking about in the mm -hmm. gospel today. They suffered from it as well, but they still had vision. And in fact, because of the envy that they suffered sometimes between brothers fighting, Vision was revealed. King Stefan, being blinded by his jealous brother, ended up becoming one of the greatest visionaries of the church. Although he lost his physical sight, he could see more clearly than anyone. Becoming a holy monastic, renouncing the worldly glory of his kingship. King Stefan, built churches. What is the eye? The Lord is talking about the noose. He's talking about the noose. What is the noose? The noose is the eye of your heart. The noose is the thing that allows you to see what's important. The noose is that faculty that you must develop if you are to have vision, real vision, 
Not just being able to look upon something, but to see. This is why we become so consumed with how we look, what we wear, what our kids wear, what our house looks like, what our car looks like, what people will think of us, what people won't think of us. It's because we're blind. We blinded our news. We've taken mud and filth and we've poured it into our eyes. The eye of our news. And so we grope about and we're blind. And we know we're blind because we can feel as Christians, you see, because when you're baptized and chrismated, you're given two eyes. Baptism is the one, chrismation is the other. Spiritually speaking, you're given two eyes to see. And when you don't get the right nutrients, let's say, your vision becomes weak. And you know that feeling of groping because you're spiritually blind. So you must have vision. You must find the thing that can give you sight again. Or I rather should say the one who can give you sight again. When our news is clear, we're granted vision. And when we have vision, there's so much that we can do. In fact, there's nothing we can't do. The Serbian people, they have sin. And yet their vision is clear. Saint Nikolai Veronovich, Saint Nikolai Zicha, he talks about how the Serbian people were Theodules. That in spite of their sins, they always remembered one thing, that they were the slaves of God. And because they were the slaves of God, it gave them vision, it gave them inspiration. And in spite of their civil strife, their sins, their tendency to be distracted, God always cleared the way and allowed their real eye, their true eye to see, to see him, to keep their focus. And so they had nobility, they had courage, they had beauty, true beauty, they had all these things because their vision was clear. So Maximus the Confessor, he tells us about Logismi, these intrusive thoughts. He also talks to us about where these thoughts come from. They come from our lack of vision. Your noose looks upon something. It looks upon a house. And instead of seeing a place where you can raise your children in safety, you can have meals, you can pray, you begin to see an extension of yourself. You begin to think of wealth, luxury, vanity. When your physical eye looks upon gold, your spiritual eye, instead of seeing something that gives glory to God, sees something that, ooh, this will make me rich, and women will love me. I'll have power and influence. You see, you have to have this inner eye clean if you want your physical eye to do what it needs to do. A man doesn't look upon a woman with lust because of his physical eye. He looks upon a woman with lust because of the spiritual eye. It is always the inner eye first. Your physical eye sees because you have a spiritual eye. God created us in such a way that the inner is what guides the outer. And that's what happened in the fall. Everything became inverted and reversed. And so we chase around anxiously, wondering about what we're going to wear, how we're going to look, what we're going to eat. Not because we're hungry, not because we need nourishment, but because we want pleasure. And so we develop passions, and then we become anxious, and then we begin to lose vision. We don't live a life how it's meant to be, because we've been blinded. Our noose, the eye of our heart, no longer sees. And instead of seeing the world, the material world for a gift, to worship God, to have communion with God and with others, we instead see a way to have power and control and luxury and vanity, and it should not be. But God in his goodness and his mercy understands our fallenness. 
And so, what are we to do? How are we to now cleanse this eye? I've been wearing glasses, gosh, I mean, as soon as I could read. I've been wearing glasses since like second grade. I'm almost 50 years old. And one of the things about wearing glasses, you realize, sometimes you forget because it becomes second nature, but you can begin to realize how dependent you are. If I don't have these, I'm groping around. I need to have the right lenses in order for me to see. What are you to do? You need to have the right lenses on your noose. You need to have the wherewithal to say, I don't have my glasses. Why can't I see? I don't have my glasses. What are the glasses? Well, the reading of scripture, because in the reading of scripture, you know and hear and receive the Lord's commandments. You cannot be inspired by God. You cannot know what God wants unless you're hearing from God. You cannot assume that God is just going to, you know, speak something into you. He could, maybe, but the problem is, is all this is so congested. And this is another reason why you want your news to be clean, because God does want to speak to you. He does want to give you vision. There's so much crud for him to work through. And so the reading of scripture is not only where we hear the commandments, but it also washes and cleans the noose. When you read scripture, you're reminded of what's important. When you read scripture, you're convicted of the things that you maybe didn't even need, that you didn't know needed conviction of. You read and you realize, oh my gosh. And you see yourself so much more clearly. The second thing, confession. Confession. And I just want to take one moment to speak on this because I'm very grateful I have a parish where people confess. This is good. But I want us all to take another step forward. Our confessions often time are checking the box. You gotta check the box, that's fine. But you should be looking for that thing that you can't see. This is why we talk about at times, forgive me Lord for my sins of deed, of knowledge and in ignorance. We should start asking about that place where we're ignorant, that place where we're blind, where we can't see. God loves us and he knows our weakness and he's gentle. And so oftentimes, do not expect God to kind of break down the door. The Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit doesn't command or, or berate, he invites. And so I encourage all of you to keep this in mind when you're preparing for confession, invite the Holy Spirit to help you to see what you can't see. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you to gain vision, to gain inspiration again. Because it's with that inspiration that we truly see, we truly have vision, and this is what we're called to be as the people of God. This is what we're called to be as the church, to be the ones that see God, because if we don't see God, who will? If we don't have vision, who will in this world? If we don't know what's important, who will? Through the prayers of King Stephan, the blind, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, help us to see.